Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today, once again, we're going to be looking at angles. I'm in my math journal, volume 2, on page 213, unit 6, lesson 9, measuring more angles. Well, let's read the instructions, shall we? It says, identify each angle as acute, right, straight, or obtuse. Use your angle measurer to measure the angles on this page. Record your measurements in the table, then circle the right angle below. Well, boys and girls, I'm going to go a little off script with this assignment today, specifically where it talks about making an angle measurer. Well, one of the, uh, one of the tasks that my teacher's manual asks me to do is to have students kind of craft their own full circle protractor, uh, which would give you some approximate angle measurements. Um, because I'm teaching virtually this year, and because some of you might be watching this from home, you might not have the, uh, the supplies needed to build your own angle measurer. And I thought, well, let's just go and use the tools themselves, okay? In my hands right here, I have two examples of protractors. Now, this one is the most common protractor you'll see. This is a semicircle or half circle protractor that measures 180 degrees, okay? Most of you have access to this math template that also has protractors. We have a full circle protractor here, and then we have a semicircle or half circle protractor at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to use our math template to make some more exacting measurements. Okay, and uh, before I get started, I am going to switch from my math journal page, which is still in my math journal book to a photocopied version, which will allow me to lay it flat and do some uh, measurements flat on my surface here of my standing desk. Let's take a look at the first problem. It says angle A. I need to identify what type of angle it is, and I need to give a measurement. Okay? So, first of all, since I have this photocopy, I can turn my page in any direction I want to, which is going to be very very useful for when I go to measure, okay? So an angle, of course, has a vertex and two either line segments or two rays that help form the angle, okay? Now, if you've never used a protractor before, there is a center point to that protractor where you are to line it up with your vertex of the angle you want to measure. And the base of your semicircle protractor is where you're going to line up the first of the two either line segments or rays so that you can get a baseline measurement. So the, the base of your protractor here needs to line up with one of the two uh, line segments or rays, which will be zero degrees. Okay. Now, as you can see, this uh, math template protractor is semi-translucent, means that you can kind of see through. It's kind of green, but you can see through it, okay? And as I look through the green plastic of my template, I can kind of see that the second uh, line segment, or this is a ray, that makes up my angle hits about the 45 degree mark. I can tell because here's 40 and here's 50 and the line is somewhere in between. Okay, It's actually a little closer to 40 than it is to 50 so it's a little closer to the 40 end uh, than 45. Okay, It's about 44 give or take. Okay, But again I'm just being asked to give an approximate measurement. So when I go to fill this in, this angle, which is less than 90 degrees, would be acute. So in this box right here, I would just write, it is acute. Oh, look at it. It's so little. It's so cute. That's how I remember that phrase. Okay. And then I would put in the measurement. It's about 45 degrees. Now, if you measure this from home and you get like 43, 44, or maybe even 46, that's, that's okay. Okay. We're, we're learning how to use this tool. Okay. Now let's take a look at B. B is right here, okay? Now to me, B looks about to be like a right angle because it's got that square corner. It kind of looks like an L. But I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to use my protractor to help verify 
what I think is correct. So again, I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to line up my center with my vertex. I'm going to line up the base of my protractor with one of the rays in this angle. And so it lines up with zero degrees. And as I can see, yes indeedy, it is 90 degrees because I can see that second ray from underneath the translucent plastic. The arrowhead's pointed out and there it is, 90 degrees. There's a little kind of viewfinder right here, a little piece of, uh, like a, a hole in the plastic so you can see right through it, okay? So if an angle is 90 degrees, we know it to be a right angle. Okay, about 90 degrees. One of the instructions says, record your measurements in the table, then circle the right angle below. So I'm just going to knock that out right now. I'm going to circle that right angle. But you probably already guessed it to be right before I even started. Okay, Let's do one more, and then I'm going to leave you some to do on your own. Angle C. All right, well, compared to angle B, this is wider. Okay, And because it's wider than a 90-degree angle, it must be obtuse. Okay, Obtuse angles are bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180. So I'm going to write obtuse right here. But how obtuse is it? Well, in the space right here, it says between blank and blank. Now this, again, ties into the fact that they initially wanted you to use an angle measurer. But again, we're going to use our tractor to get a more exacting amount. Okay. So again, I'm going to start with one of the rays. Now, I could do it from either direction, technically because on both this protractor and this protractor, it numbers from 0 to 180 in one arc, and then it goes 0 to 180 the opposite direction too. Okay, But since most of us read from left to right, it's usually easier for me to start with the, the ray or one half of the angle on the left being my 0 degree mark. But that's just personal preference. You could do it from this direction, too, if you'd like. And sometimes if you're making measurements, especially, say, if you're in the real world wanting to figure out an angle, you only have one approach to measure the angle. And sometimes you would have to have your right angle, your right uh, ray of your angle, be the, the zero degree mark. Okay. But since I have a choice, I'm going to start over here. Okay. So here's zero lined up on that one ray. My vertex is lined up with my center point. And uh, it looks to me like this angle is somewhere between 120 and 130. So it would be about 125. Okay, So I could be uh, more vague and say it's between 120 and 130 degrees, like the, uh, the blank allows me to write. Or I can just be more exacting and say it's about 125 degrees. Okay? And that's all there is to it. The right tool for the right job. If you have a protractor, then use the protractor. There's no need to uh, reinvent the wheel if you have the tool needed to, to make the measurement. Okay? So try D, E, and F on your own. Okay? Use your protractor. Okay? And if you're having trouble making sense of how to use this thing or this thing here, talk to your math teacher. They're happy to help you. Okay, I was happy to help you with this video, and I hope it was helpful for you. Um, until we speak again, friends, good luck and have a good day.